These people thought they were goners and recorded their final messages to their loved ones. First up in 2016, a diver lost at sea taped what he thought were his final moments. So that's it. Jacob Childs found himself treading in the open water. There was no one else around, but he had a GoPro rigged up. The sun's going down. Jacob had been on a group scuba tour exploring a shipwreck 30 miles off the coast of Australia. At some point, he got separated from the group, and when he came up to the surface, he was pulled away by a swift current. To his shock, the guide boat pulled away, leaving him all alone. That's a wrap on old Peggy. I guess. He was kept above water by the bright orange marker behind him, which served as a flotation device. As the sun set, his hopes dwindled. But then, a rescue plane appeared. <laughs> plane's coming back. Told you. Plane enough to come back. Jacob was in the water for six terrible hours. Back on dry land, he credited his wetsuit for keeping him safe from hypothermia and that emergency marker for being visible to the rescue plane. His cool attitude helped too. I wouldn't say I was scared. Um, I was thirsty. That's a wrap on old his number wasn't up just yet. The same was also true for a nurse from Minnesota. She took a farewell selfie after falling 100 feet down a ravine that same year. She also managed to scratch a goodbye note to her parents. Quote, it's the end, she wrote on an app. I was in excruciating pain. Inside Edition, Stephen Fabian spoke to Amber from her hospital bed. Amber was hiking in Arizona in rugged terrain. Here she is just an hour before her terrible fall. She lost her footing and fell down this cliff. I was blacked out for all of this, so I don't know if that was my mind's way of protecting me or what. She came to on a rocky ledge. My back was broken three places. My nose is broken. It broke across the top here. My ear had ripped off in the back. Did you try to call 911? Yeah, I tried sending text messages and I tried everything. I had no cell phone service. I eventually put my phone on airplane mode just so that I could watch the time so I knew how long I was laying there. Amber stayed there for hours, including through the bitterly cold desert night. She prepared herself for the end. I thought, at least if I die today, I've done what makes me happy. But I would feel so bad for my family, and that's what kept going through my head. Amber shared the goodbye note she wrote to her family. I said, Mom and Dad, I'm watching and yelling. Nope, it's not. It's something the end with a heart. After 24 excruciating hours, a search and rescue helicopter spotted Amber. It airlifted her to safety. She was able to smile through her bruises and was able to recover at the same Minnesota clinic where she worked as a nurse. Her mom was there to help. She's just our hero. She's um, so strong. Amber said she was thankful to be alive. Hopefully I can be home soon. Hey, everybody. Uh... That's all I can really say. A man in Tennessee recorded this goodbye video after a motorcycle accident in 2016. Just want to say I love you guys. Sorry it's being stupid, but you know that's what I do. Kevin Dipenbrock thought he didn't have much time left. He said he and his friend Philip Polito were riding their motorcycles when they crashed into each other and plummeted down a ravine. Philip died in the accident, and Kevin wasn't sure he'd make it before help arrived. Seven o'clock. Got to use my flashlight to wave somebody down. With no cell reception, he used his phone to record farewells to his family. Love you. Love you, Courtney. Love you, Mom, Dad. But thankfully, after 30 hours, a passing motorist heard Kevin's cries for help. The experience gave him a new appreciation for the people in his life. Take care. Love you guys. Help! Help! And another would-be goodbye happened in 2020 in the Mojave Desert. An injured hiker was stranded far from humanity. My problem is I can't stand, I can't turn, I can't sit, I certainly can't walk. Robert Ringo had been hiking in the Joshua Tree National Park where temperatures hit 106 degrees Fahrenheit. He got hurt when he fell on some rocks and found himself without cell phone service. He started taking selfie video to record what he feared might be his last days. Probably nobody ever see this. His car was parked less than a mile away, but he wasn't able to get there on his own. You can see how my, my foot is just flopping 
He survived by eating juniper berries he could reach. He'd also been carrying extra water and made a canopy out of his hat. And there he would lie for 40 hours before help arrived. He spoke to Inside Edition's Jim Murray. It was a miracle. 40 hours later, a helicopter's here and I'm here and I couldn't see his eyes, but I knew we met. At any point, did you think nobody is going to find me? When I parked in my car to go to the walk, I sent my location to my son, but there being no cell signal, he had no idea. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. I mean, extremely well, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. <laughs> Just, and physically, I'm doing great. Robert said he planned to start hiking again as soon as his leg healed. This is Inside Edition Digital.